Welcome to Spreadsheet Geek. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at manipulating text strings using primarily the left and the right functions, but we'll use a couple other functions in combination with those to manipulate text the way we want it to look. There's many reasons why you'd want to do this, but usually it occurs when you pull data out of your database and it doesn't look quite the way you want it. By the end of this lesson, you should have some very good tools in your toolbox to deal with those situations. This video was made using Microsoft Excel 2019. Let's take a look at very basic use of the left and right function. How do these work? So I've entered a couple different text strings into these cells in column F here. And you can see there's some spaces, some letters, some numbers, and there's a date at the bottom. We'll see how these behave using the left and right function. So the most basic use of the left function over here is to retain a certain number of characters on the left and get rid of everything else. So if you want to retain what's on the left, think use the left function. So it's a very simple function. It just asks, where is the text? It's right there. And how many characters do we want to retain? Let's retain three. And you can see it retained the left three characters of this cell. If I autofill that down, you can see they all look the way you would expect. There's a character here retained after my, which is the space. So we're not seeing that. And what about this date? Why are we getting a 385 for the date instead of what we would expect? Well, remember, dates are numbers in Excel. The number one is January 1st, 1900, and every date thereafter is a subsequent number. So if I reformat this date in a general format, you can see it's pulling the 385 off there. Let's look at the write function now. Think write function when you want to retain what's on the right. So we'll punch that in. It's got the same arguments. Where's the text? Right here. How many characters do you want to retain? Three. And we get an A space three. Let's autofill that down. And you can see it did the exact same job. But even though these are different length character strings, it's going to always retain just the right three characters. That's the most basic use of the left and right functions. Let's look at a different problem now. In this example, we're going to remove the left three characters. And we're going to keep everything else, regardless of the different length of the text strings. We just want to chop off the left three characters. To do this, we're going to use a combination of the right function and the len function or length function. So the length function, and I put some uh, examples over here on the right. All it does, if you give it a cell reference, is give you the length of that text string. So that's five characters. The next one is seven, nine, 10, and so forth. And remember that date? Well, that's actually a five digit date if you format this as a general format. So that's how the length function works. So how do we remove just the left three characters and keep everything else when you have multiple different lengths of strings? So how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to get kind of clever and we're going to use a nested length function within our write function. So we want to remove the left three characters from each of these. So if we're removing the left, we're keeping what's on the right. Remember our rule. That means you use the right function. The first part of this argument here is very easy. 
just where is it? It's right there. Now, this is where it's going to be kind of clever. We're going to say the length of this cell, which in this case is five characters. So that's five characters, and we're going to subtract three always, and then close our parentheses. So if we pull this down and autofill into the next one, you can see the formula is saying the length of F11. So this one is seven characters long and we're still gonna subtract three, so it's gonna keep the four characters on the right. This is a space three, this is a space three, four, five, and that's gonna work out very well for us. In each case, the left three characters are removed and everything else is retained and we all know about the date. Let's move over to the right now. In this case, what we want to do is remove the right three characters and keep everything else. So if we're removing what's on the right or keeping what's on the left, we want to use that left function. Where is the text? It's right here. And we're going to, again, use a nested length function and we need the length of the whole text string. In this case, it's five. And we want to remove the right three characters, so we're going to subtract three. So there you go. We have just chopped off the right three characters and kept the one, two. And as our text string got longer, like down here, we're keeping all but the right three characters. So all of these work out very nicely. We're going to continue now with a little more complex example. In this one, uh, and, and I've intentionally put a capital A in each one of our text strings that we're using. And by the way, on this one, there's actually a capital A and a small a, lowercase. So that's to show that this is case sensitive. What we want to do is remove all of the text string that occurs before a specified character, in this case, capital A. We're going to use the write and the find functions in combination to do this. How does the find function work? Very simply, it's a lot like the length function. You type in the function. The first argument is, what text do you want, to me, want me to find? And you have to enclose this in quotes. So we're going to put in a capital A. And then, where do you want me to look? I'm going to tell it where to look. And that is giving us a 3. And that is the position in the 5 character text string where the A appears. Let's see if it uh, does a good job with that. So three, 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 and then four for this text string, and there is no A in this one at all. That's how the find function works. So what do we want to do here? We want to remove all before a specified character in our text string, in this case, a capital A. So we're going to actually use three functions on this one. We want to remove all before, so that's the left, so we want to keep what's on the right, so we know we're going to enter a right function and nest these other things within that. Where is the text? Right here. Now, think about this logically. For this example right here, we want to keep the A space 3. So that's three characters. So we, if we just put in a three right here, we would actually get what we want, but it's not going to work on these other longer text strings. We want a universal formula that works on all of them. So we've got to take out that three and get clever. So we're going to use the length function 
and that's in F19. We're going to close it off. That's 5 in this case, and we want to subtract something using the find function. We want to find the letter capital A. And where do we want to look for it? Right here. And let's for now just close that off and see what it gives us. Gave us a space 3. So remember, we wanted to remove all before the specified character A. So we want to actually keep the A. We're almost there. We just need to, right now this is 2. The length of the string in F19 minus that part that's right of the A is 2. So we're going to make, we got, we got to add one back here. Now we've achieved what we wanted to achieve. We've removed all before the specified character. Let's see if that works on different length text strings. So it worked there and there and there. We've removed everything before the capital A in each one of these examples. That one was probably the most difficult of the day. This, this next one's a little easier. We want to remove all after a specified character, capital A. So if we're removing all after we're removing on the right, we're keeping what's on the left, so we know we're going to use the left function. Where is the text? Right here. And the number of characters. We're going to use the find function. Remember the find function over here? It returns the position of a character that you tell it to. So what do you want it to find? In quotes, capital A. And within what text? This text. And we'll close that off. And we have removed all after the specified character A. So if you look at this formula, find A in F19 is always going to return, well, it's going to return a 3 here, a 3 here, a 3 here. So you're keeping the left three characters in conjunction with this left uh, function. So this should work fine. Let's autofill that down. And we have successfully gotten rid of everything right of the capital A. Okay, I've got two more examples. Let's scroll them up here and take a look. In this one, we want to retain all characters before the specified character, which is A. So if we're retaining all that's before, that's the left. So we know we're using the left function. Where's the text? Right here. And for the number of characters, in this case it would be two. So how do we get there? Let's uh, use the find function. And we're going to find what text? Capital A in quotes. Within cell here. Let's just see what that gives us. Okay, so that gave us 12A. That's pretty close to what we want. We want to retain all before the A. So we actually don't want the A. So in this function, it's, it's basically find A in F28 is returning the number 3. So this is telling us keep the left 3. We only want to keep the left 2. Take out the A with a minus 1. Now that formula will work on all of these. So there's a space after this one and there's a space after this one. So we've successfully retained everything left of the capital A. 
Okay, one last example over here. We want to retain all after the specified character, but not the specified character. It's actually a lot like this one. So we're retaining after, so we know we're using, we're keeping what's on the right, so we want to use the right function. Where's the text? Right here. Number of characters. We're going to use the length function. Length of this cell text string. So that's going to be five in this case. And we want to subtract three to give us the last two characters. So how do we do that? Let's subtract find. Find what? The capital A in quotes in this cell. So that's going to give us a three. So this is five minus three or two. So we're keeping the right two characters, which is exactly what we want to do. So we get a space three. Let's see if that works all the way down. Everything after A, everything after A, and so forth. Those look good. So actually, when you look at these, this one and this one are very similar, similar returns. And this one and this one are very similar. We're just keeping or not keeping the A in these different examples. And remember with all of these, to get rid of the formulas that are existing in your cells, you're gonna to have to copy them. I'll, I'll go ahead and copy up here and then paste as values to get rid of those formulas. And then you just get the raw text strings. So don't forget to do that. Another question in many people's minds may be about flash fill. Flash fill is up here on the data menu here. It's, it's muted out right now because it's not a, temporarily not available. But Flash Fill was uh, a part of Excel 2013 and every version thereafter. And I, will, I did uh, to actually test all of these with Flash Fill. And what I found is that Flash Fill can do some of these. It did this one, for example, no problem at all. It tends to work where you would use the right function. It tends to not be as reliable where you would use the the left function, like a lot of these and these. And at the end of the day, I would say uh, two things. It tends to work better where you use the right function versus the left function. It doesn't deal with leading and trailing spaces very well. And if I had a list of items thousands of rows long, I personally would rather use an embedded formula than trust flash fill. That's my conclusion. I hope you found this video interesting and useful and are able to use it to your benefit. I will continue putting out one video a week for the foreseeable future. Please hit my subscribe button and you'll be alerted when I'm releasing a new video. Thanks for visiting Spreadsheet Geek.